One of the most argued tool topics in modern construction is the sidewinder versus the worm drive saw. The truth is, one saw isn't better than the other, it just depends on how you prefer to work. Like many of you, I own a couple different versions of saws, worm drives and sidewinders. I've always wondered though why in years past the East Coast uses sidewinders primarily and the West Coast uses those worm drives. Uh, one reason that I heard that makes a lot of sense is that it was based on manufacturer location. For example, the Skill worm drive was manufactured in the Midwest and then it was brought to the West Coast where it just took off, the market was established. The Sidewinder, in contrast, was developed in the East Coast and a distributor who was handling one line of products also bought the Sidewinder because you know, it was being made by the same company that they were buying products from. So that line became established in the East Coast. Now it doesn't matter, everybody's got a mix. But whatever the reasoning, today there's a lot of cordless circular saws out there. But none of them really come close to the worm drive in design or power until now. Makita has a new rear-handled cordless cutting solution for framers from um, framers, form contractors, and carpenters. And they developed this rear handle saw. It's a seven and a quarter inch saw powered by two 18 volt batteries. This, do, this saw was designed to cut the cord on framing job sites and offer a real cordless solution for worm drive users. And contrary to popular belief, the saw was not designed to target the legion of blade left rear handled saw users, although it does give them an option to go cordless especially if they're used to that kind of a saw. Their goal was to really give you a maximum cutting power of 36 volts without leaving the whole 18 volt platform. And also to offer a cordless option for worm drive users. So my company, my remodeling company, Concrete Carpenter, we do a lot of remodeling, small additions, decks, stuff like that. This week, we were framing a short four foot by six foot deck platform with 12 stringers coming down stairs to a beautiful platform. We decided it would be a, as good a job site as ever to test out this rear handled saw. The saw itself weighs 12.4 pounds, it's 17 and a half inches long. It, that's the weight with the batteries. Uh, it's durable, well made, the levers, pivot points, housing all seem to be made from very durable materials. The blade guard, the motor housing, the adjustable shoe plate, it's magnesium and that's going to keep the weight down as we all know. Um, Makita put a soft start motor that uh, rotates at 5100 RPMs. It's going to give you fast cutting and ripping capabilities. We found the saw kept up in our framing. It kept up with our cutting speed and it never bogged down. We timed some cuts in a 2x10 and on average a uh, 2x10 takes 1.5 seconds to cut and that's without killing the saw or you know going crazy. The saw's trigger is protected by an ambidextrous switch which is conveniently located to use with a thumb. Um, it has excellent cutting capacity. And so for instance, on a 90 degree setting, it'll cut to a 9 16 deep. At 45, it'll do one and three quarters inch deep. And it bevels to 53 degrees and it'll give you an inch and a half at that point. Adjusting the depth of cut is easy. The scale is conveniently labeled and it's got quick reference marks. Quarter inch, half inch, three quarter, one, one and a half inch, two and finally two and a half inch depth. <clears throat> um, like many of the new tools that show up on our job site, our foreman Brian usually tries to call dibs on first use. He won this time. Uh, Brian's first impression of the rear handled saw was that it was lighter than his corded version, his corded worm drive. And he immediately, immediately noticed that lack of torque, the wrist torque on startup. And that's that soft start motor. In fact, the soft start motor and the electric brake that the saw has are really noticeable. He also noticed that the saw was powerful and to use Brian's words, it cuts like crazy. Uh, Brian actually used the saw first and for the most part of this deck build and he cut, um, he cut the frame for us and 12 stringers, uh, six steps, seven risers, and he did it all in one charge. Um, the stringers can be tough on a cordless circular saw. The saw lasted two days with on and off cutting for that deck um, and when time came to charge the batteries, we were very surprised that the charger really, it, it charges both batteries at the same time for 30 minutes. Um, because we only had two batteries during this, this frame job, we resorted to using the M16 six and a half inch cordless circular saw, Milwaukee, with their 9.0 uh, amp hour battery. And there was a noticeable difference in power. Uh, the Makita was way more powerful. Uh, in fact, the crew felt that Makita 
was as powerful, if not more, than the FlexVolt Sidewinder that we normally use. Uh, runtime testing. We wanted to get a really good handle on what this saw could do for work. Now Makita publishes performance testing of the saw and they say you can get 558 cuts on a 2x4 uh, with two 5.0 amp hour batteries or 291 cuts in a 2x10. Now again, I'm not sure how they're doing it and how much rest they give the saw or if it's a machine making the cut, but we performed our own runtime testing with 2x10 spruce framing and we got 220 cuts. And look, I want to be upfront with you and say that our testing criteria is extremely aggressive, which is why we probably achieved less cuts than Makita did. You know, we have human error, the, the saw might have wobbled a little, there's a lot of variables, right? Um, let's talk about our criteria, our testing criteria. For our testing, we use the same blade that we framed the deck with, okay, because not every saw you pick up has brand new blades in it. And we performed a series of 10 cuts, and then we rested the saw for two minutes. We would repeat this procedure over and over again until the blade stopped in the wood. And it required more than one recycle of the trigger to finish the cut. So we actually stopped at 198, we recycled the trigger once, we got to 220. Like any cordless saw, the key ingredient to a good recipe is, and performance and runtime is to make sure that you're using sharp blades. With a sharp blade, this saw is an absolute no-brainer solution for worm drivers. And, and especially for worm drivers switching over to cordless. We were really impressed with the power and runtime of the saw. And one thing to note, if you're gonna be using the saw for framing, you're gonna need more batteries. You're gonna need at least four batteries so that you can rotate through that cycle, the 30 minute cycle, with no downtime. Um, when we talk about overload alert, this saw, um, if the tool is overworked, there's an LED indicator on top of the tool next to the battery gauge that will blink green. Um, and that lets you know if you're pushing the tool too hard, it's gonna overload, overheat. It's important to note that we pushed this saw and we never saw that alert go on, uh, either during normal framing use on the deck or during our runtime testing. Uh, the saw has an automatic speed change function. So either high speed mode or high torque mode. It, it, it's kind of, it's not like a governor, but it's kind of like an automatic transmission. The saw changes operation depending on the workload. So when the saw workload is low, the tool will run high speed for faster cutting. When the saw workload was high, the saw will ramp down to high torque mode for more powerful cutting. So how do you notice this? We first noticed it when we were cutting the stringers on this deck project and the tool's motor sounded as, as, as if it had geared down, uh, but the cutting power and the speed were not affected. Nothing was changed. Um, I wanna talk to you about bevel adjustments and the positive stopper on the saw. Adjusting the bevel simple, the scale is easy to, uh, enough to read. Um, I would prefer if Makita engraved, um, painted the engraved bevel markings. It'd be easier, I think, for my eyes, but whatever. The positive stopper, it's useful for setting desired angles quickly. So there are three positive stops, 22 and a half, 45, and 53 degrees. We found um, the positive stopper was super easy to work with and use. You basically just turn the positive stalker, stopper so that it points at the desired bevel. You loosen the bevel lever, you tilt the saw base until the saw stops right where you want it, at that pre-selected angle. Um, sight lines. We really like the sight line of the saw. In fact, it's easy to see your cut line on either side of that blade. Doesn't matter. Left or right hand users. Uh, there are two, uh, two typical cutouts that you typically see on saws. It's front base of the plate, zero and 45 degrees that you can use as reference. There's a one inch mark to the left of the zero and a one and two inch mark to the right of the zero when you're making some quick and dirty rips. Um, the saw is equipped with an electric brake. I talked about this earlier. It stops the blade instantly. And we really like the safety feature. I think it's important in saws these days. We did notice though when the tool starts to run out of battery runtime, the electric brake stops working. It kind of, uh, 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 and, and it still spins a little bit. Good sign to change your batteries. Um, the Makita's saw hook on the saw is awesome. It folds down over the motor out of use, like a worm drive saw when not being used. Um, it's got a three and a quarter inch depth, which allowed us to hang anywhere along the deck's double rim joist, three inch rim joist, or on a saw horse. Awesome. There are uh, two positions for the hook uh, that positively index into. One is at 90 out from the saw, and the other is 180 straight up. So you can hang it in different angles. The saw um, ejects dust as well as any other saw that I've used. We did notice that when the blade was buried deep, close to the wood, the sawdust tends to build up all around the saw. Uh, a workaround on this is we raise the blade slightly, 
and it discharged the, the dust fine, not build up, which was nice. Uh, battery gauge and charger. All Makita batteries, they, they, these Makita batteries have fuel gauges on the battery, but, but when you plug them into the saw and you insert them in, you can't see the battery gauges. This saw has two onboard fuel gauges right on top of the saw, so you can monitor that battery charge. The Makita charger, it's a DS18RD charger, comes with the kit. It's a two-port fast charger, and it charges two 18 volt batteries at the same time and you can achieve your full charge in 30 minutes. That's one of the fastest chargers that I'm aware of. Uh, this charger also has a USB output, output port and a protective rubber boot to keep it from getting dirty or wet. Um, and the port is rated for 5 volts, uh, 1.5 amps. As far as cost on this tool, on the SAR, it either comes as a bare tool or a kit. A bare tool is $199, comes with a blade and a, a wrench. $359 for the kit, that's a blade, wrench, the two port charger, and two 5.0 amp hour batteries. The Makita rear handled circular saw is powerful and smooth cutting. It's probably the most I can say right off the bat without thinking more about it. Uh, performance, it's performance based for framers, formwork, and carpentry, and it uses the same batteries as 150 other Makita tools, eliminating the need to invest in a separate battery platform or a bigger, slower charging battery with limited compatibility. So regardless of whether you're an East Coast or a West Coast carpenter, if you're serious, if you're a serious circular saw user, you need to check out this new rear handled saw. Guys, I'm Rob Robillard. Please consider subscribing to our video channel. It's right there. Just click that button right there in the corner and we'll see you at the next tool review. Take care.